Let's have a look at simple interest. Firstly, it's important to note that we get two different types of interest. Basically, good interest. Good interest is when you put money into the bank and the bank gives you a reward for investing the money with them. And secondly, we get bad interest. So that is when we loan money from the bank um, and we are basically punished for loaning money from the bank. This is very, very simple terms. We're going to look at an example of good interest first. So let's consider a little story. Amber wants to invest some money um, and the bank offers her 10% interest on that. So she literally puts her money into the bank and depending on how long she invests it for, the bank rewards her by giving her interest on it, which means after a certain set period, she gets her original money back along with the interest that she received on this investment. So the reason that the banks give you money on your investment is that they actually take that money that you invest and they invest it on a global level. So they're rewarding you for playing basically with your money during the time that you invest it for. Normally you will get a question that looks like this and there will be two different types of questions that we can ask from this example. So if Amber invests 7,000 Rand 10% interest per annum, which means per year for two years, we can either just ask how much interest does she get or we can ask you how much money does she have after the two year period. And if you understand percentages, this is actually rather simple. First of all, if she gets 10% on 7,000 Rand, you should know that that is 700 Rand. Over two years, that'll be 700 multiplied by two, so which is 1,500. You can think about this in your head and do the, the math quite easily because the numbers are quite small, um, but let's write this out. So for A, she ha would have invested 7,000 Rand at 10%, so 10% of, which means we basically multiply by 10%, which is 10 over 100, and she does so for two years. Like we've just said, this is 1,400 Rand, which means that after the two year period, she would not only have 7,000 Rand, but she would have 7,000 Rand plus the interest that she just received from the bank, which is 1,400 Rand, so in total, after the two-year period, she will have 8,400 Rand. Let's consider some terminology that you will need for this. So first of all, we start with the investment period. So the investment period for this is two years. Uh, the symbol that is used for this is N. Um, you can think of it as the number of years, or sometimes there's also a number of months or number of quarters, but most time is number of years. Uh, secondly, we have the interest rate that, they've, that the bank offers us. Um, once again, the interest rate can either be for um, good interest or, or also bad interest when you loan money. So the interest rate is either abbreviated as I, um, it's sometimes also abbreviated as a little R for rate. So either an I for interest or an R for rate. The original amount that Amber invested is called the principal amount. So in the beginning, she had 7,000 Rand. So that was the principal amount that she invested. And then this little extra bit that was added on, that was her interest. Yeah, so some basic terminology there. The investment period, the principal amount. Let's just write the word amount there. Um, and another amount is the interest amount, which is different to the interest rate. So remember the interest amount gets added to the principal amount so that you have more money now. So interest amount is money and principal amount is money. But the interest rate is really just the percentage at which they calculate how much you will get. So don't get the interest rate confused with the interest amount. The principal amount, like the interest amount is money, where the interest rate is just the percentage at which your investment interest is going to be calculated over your investment period. 
like with most things in mathematics, we can also do these calculations backwards, where either the interest um, percentage, the interest rate, or the number of years, the investment period is left out, and we need to work backwards from the interest amount to try and work this out. So let's consider a little bit of grade 7 maths. If we ask you in grade 7, what is 2 times 3 times something to give me 24, what goes into that little blocky? And I'm sure it will be fairly easy for you to figure out that if 2 times 3 gives me 6, then 6 times 4 gives me 24. Even if the blocky is moved to a different position, we can still work this out. Because if we know that 2 times 4 gives me 8, then 8 times 3 is 24. Maybe you know your timetables and you know exactly how you worked this out. But if the numbers were a bit more complicated, you would have said 24 divided by 2 divided by 3 would give me 4. Because the inverse operation of multiplication is division. The same for the next one. You would say 24 divided by 2 divided by 4. So 24 divided by 2 is 12 divided by 4 is 3. So once again, just by doing everything in reverse, we can get to the answer. The same with simple interest calculations backwards. If I know that 7,000 times I wrote 0 0.10, but you can also write 10 over 100, depending on how you like to type it in on your calculator. So if I have 7,000 times 10% and the answer is 1,400, then I can definitely figure out what goes into the little blocky over there. So 10% of 7,000 is 700. And what do I need to do to get to 1,400? Multiply it by 2. So my investment period was 2. Can you see that it's just like your grade 7 calculations? Uh, it's just a bit more complicated because it's in a story sum now. But the same principles apply. Okay, so in the next one, we have 7,000 multiplied by 2, which is um, 14,000. But my answer was 1,400, which means that what I multiply by must be quite small. It must be a fraction. So if this one confuses you, let's use the method that we used above and say 1,400 divided by 7,000 divided by 2. And on your calculator, you will get 0, 0,1, which is also 10%. And this makes sense in the context because I need an investment of an interest rate. So here the interest rate is 0,1 or 10%. Um, and that is how I find that missing value. So now that you know, have, know how to do this using your knowledge from grade 7, let's try and see if we can do it in table format. So doing these, thing, these questions in a table format actually makes it really easy to see how we're working forwards and how we're working backwards. So in our first example, it is fairly straightforward because I have to say my principal amount of 12,000 multiplied by 5%, and you can write this over 100 if you want to, multiplied by 5 years. And of course, you can use your calculator for this section. So times 0 0.05 if you want to use the decimal, times 5, and then I get an interest amount of 3,000 Rand. I hope you are following and typing this in on your calculator as I'm doing it. So this gives me 3,000 Rand. Remember that because we're working with finance, we have to include the, the Rand sign in our answer. So if the interest received on the principal amount was 3,000 Rand and I originally invested 12,000 Rand, it means that I have 15,000 Rand in total. So that was fairly straightforward. I just worked forwards. I didn't find any missing values. It was just the normal simple interest formula. Now let's try working backwards because in the next one, it's um, like finding that missing little blocky like you did in grade 7. I have 18,500, and if I multiply it by 3%, I get 555, 
Now, what do I need to do with 555 to get to 400, 4,995? Well, I need to divide them. So if I type in on my calculator 4,995, which is my interest, divided by 18,500, divided by 3%, and remember to say 3 over 100, not just 3, I get 9 years. To find the final amount is really not that difficult at all because the principal amount is given and the interest amount is given. So the only thing I have to do is add them together. So on your calculator you can type in 18,500 plus 4,995 and together that gives me 23,495. That wasn't too bad for working backwards. Now let's see if we can do it for the interest rate. Remember, for the interest rate, we know we're going to get an ugly decimal as our answer. Uh, no need to worry because then we just convert it back and write it in percentage format. So 10,500 is my principal amount. Three is the number of years. And they give me the interest received. So maybe I'm going to write this one just out so you can see my method. I need to start with the interest of 1,470.50. And I'm going to divide by the principal amount. Because remember, I'm doing everything in reverse because I'm working backwards now. So instead of multiplying like I would when I'm working forwards, I'm dividing because I'm working backwards. And we type this in on our calculator. And we'll see that I get an answer of 0 0.045. Now, in case if you don't know how to express this as a percentage, just remember that you multiply by 100. Remember that the 100 actually um, reminds you of the symbol for percentage, which is one and two little zeros, just a little side note there. And then you will see that it's 4,5%. And that's what we fill in on our table. Yay. So the last one actually looks a little bit tricky because they don't give us the interest received, but they do give us the final amount. Not to worry, because we can calculate what the interest is by just subtracting the, the final amount um, from the principal amount. So in case you missed that, I'm just going to subtract these two from each other, because what I have in my account now and what I used to have, the difference between that gives me my interest. So um, if I subtract that, either you can do it in your head because the numbers are fairly easy. 38,400 minus 32,000, you will see that that is 6,400. You will see that is 6,400. Remember your RAND sign. And now I go through a similar procedure where I work backwards by dividing. So I take my interest amount. I divide it by the principal. I divide it by the interest rate of 10%. And if I do that, it gives me two years, which we can go and fill in on our table. And that is simple interest forwards and backwards in a nutshell. In case you missed all of that, let's just quickly recap all the formulas. So you should know that principal amount times interest percentage times number of years gives me the interest amount. So please remember to distinguish between interest amount and little i, which is interest percentage, which is obviously going to be over 100. When you are asked to calculate the principal amount, the number of years, or the interest percentage, you first need to find the interest amount in each case. That's what we just did in our table. So if you are given the accumulative amount and you are given the principal amount, then the difference between them will be the interest. So let's just make a quick note of that. Accumulative amount, so that's the final amount in your accounts minus my principal amount um, would equal my interest amount. 
And remember the interest amount is different to the interest percentage. So when you are asked for principal number of years or I, then you first need to calculate the interest before you can divide. Because remember when we work backwards, we divide because that is the opposite of multiply when we work forwards. But there is a little bit of a difficulty when it comes to this. Sometimes the principal amount is not given and you're only given the accumulative amount and then it gets really difficult to work out any of the rest. So what are we going to do about this? Not to worry, there is another formula. Do you still remember in algebra when we did distribution? This is going to sound like it has nothing to do with simple interest. But let's quickly have a look. Do you remember when there was a P outside the bracket that it applies to everything inside the bracket and then you multiply it in and therefore P times 1 is P and P times IN is PIN? Well, isn't that the formula to get the accumulative amount? So what I'm trying to show here is that this will give you the accumulative amount. But so does this first formula. And in the first formula, you only have one principal amount or one P, meaning that it's much easier to calculate P from this. What I mean by that is if A equals P times the bracket 1 plus I N, then it means that to get P, I have to say A divided by the bracket 1 plus I N. So algebra is actually really useful for something. Let's apply this to a story sum. In four years time, Jack wants to have saved 30,000 Rand in order to visit his cousin who lives in Ireland. He manages to receive an interest rate of 12% per annum. Okay, so that is our interest rate. Let's mark that. 12% interest rate. Um, oh, and we forgot to highlight four years. So that's our time period. And we know that he wants to have accumulated um, 30,000 Rand during this time. So that's our accumulative amount. How much must he invest now? So in this case, they are asking for the principal, but the principal is not given. So it's impossible to work out what the interest is. So we have to work with the, let's call it the algebra formula. So I have A, which is 30,000 Rand. That is my accumulative amount that he wants in his account after this period. P is what I'm looking for. So we don't know what that is. You can make a little blocky if that makes you feel comfortable. We know that if I work forwards with this formula, that there's a bracket. So let's see if we have anything in the bracket. 1 is always just 1 plus the interest rate, which in this case is 12 over 100. And then I just need to multiply it by the number of years, which is n. And in this case, it's four years. So now when I work backwards, I just divide 30,000 by the whole brackets. So when I multiply when I work forwards, I divide when I work backwards. So I'm going to divide by 1 plus 12 over 100 times 4. And you can type this whole thing into your calculator. You don't have to work out the bracket first. And this will give you an amount of 20,000 270 rand and 27 cents. Remember to round off to two decimal places.